Okay, so in the last video we, we looked at a very basic, uh, kind of a very general idea of how uh, a, an intracellular signaling network, a very simple intracellular signaling network functions as the series of uh, activations of, of protein that is triggered in, by the initial binding of the, um, the ligand to the receptor. Uh, and this is the way that information passes through the cell uh, by, by this, this pattern of activation. Pattern of activation seems familiar, yeah. Anyway, uh, this pattern of activation of these uh, proteins inside the cell. Now, things are going to get a little bit more complicated now, um, but not too complicated. So let's go back to the board and let's have a look at another kind of purely hypothetical uh, uh, example. So again, we'll have, here's our membrane, here he is, and this should all be very, very simple for you now. We'll have a receptor in yellow. Um, there he is, that'll do. His receptor and some kind of ligand, uh, an agonist, we should be a bit more specific, shouldn't we? It's not any old ligand, it's an agonist. So an agonist, which we show in red, binds to the receptor. And then this triggers some kind of intracellular signaling cascade. So it's initially, normally, some protein binds to the receptor uh, once the conformation or change on the intracellular domain has taken place, which then activates some kind of pathway. Uh, and we'll just draw letters now for names. So let's say this activates A, which then activates uh, B, uh, which then, let's say, I don't know, activates C, keep it simple. Now what happens when we have, let's say, another type of receptor? Um, so we might get a, another type of receptor, which I will show in uh, green. This is a different receptor, has a different shape, and it binds to a different ligand. Um, so this is an entirely different type of receptor, binds to an entirely different type of ligand, and it activates an entirely different subcellular signaling pathway. So this causes um, a different protein here to bind to the intercellular domain of this receptor, uh, which then triggers some kind of pathway, and we now understand how this pathway works. So maybe this brown protein here uh, activates a uh, protein, we'll call it D, which then activates um, E, let's say. And then what happens if E actually activates A? Uh, and if C inactivates, inhibits, we'll show by a flat arrow, uh, D. So what you, you can see happening here is that two receptors are interacting via their signaling pathways. So we could say, so we could kind of draw a line around this. We could call this signaling pathway um, one. And then this is a, another signaling pathway, which we'll call sig pathway, sig path two. Um, and when both these receptors are activated by their respective ligands, um, they activate their own signaling pathway and these signaling pathways then interact with each other because activated um, proteins, activated enzymes of signaling pathway one activate, uh, interact with uh, proteins from signaling pathway two. So we showed that C can inactivate D here or that E can interact with or activate A. So this is where things become really complicated because uh, often the, the signaling pathway for a single receptor is often very, very complex. Um, we've, we've, we've really looked at kind of entirely o massively oversimplified examples here with just, you know, this very linear pathway, A activates, B activates, C. But often you will get these diverging pathways where A activates B and then B activates C, D, E, and F, and then F inactivates G and which activates A and 
it gets very very complex you know the the cell is a, the internal environment of the cell is an extremely complex system uh, and you have many many interacting molecules that interact in extremely complex ways and we're looking we're, we're kind of taking a few little pieces of this very complex intracellular subcellular 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 network of molecules and just taking small pieces out kind of illustrating uh, ba the basic principle of, of how it works but in reality you have very very large numbers of, of proteins and other molecules that are interacting with each other and this is essential uh, for a cell for, to have its very very complex function for a cell to perform all the things that a cell needs to do to maintain its internal environment to metabolize molecules to build new molecules to maintain uh, ion gradients across the membrane to you know, etc etc you know to, to make energy and things like that um, this requires this very very complex network of, of molecules and receptors basically what they're doing is they are they're they're changing uh, little pieces of, of, of these networks they're kind of they're perturbing they're stimulating uh, they're prodding this uh, this complex intracellular network and causing changes and when you have a, a complete cell might have many types of receptors all, with, all that all activate their own uh, particular pathways their own particular signaling pathways and they start to interact so it's actually very difficult to say just by looking at a receptor or even by understanding a receptor's signaling pathway how um, what's going to happen when you activate the receptor in, in a particular way um, because the signaling pathway of this receptor is not isolated it's, uh, it, it can interact with m the signaling pathways of other receptors so things get very complicated very very quickly um, and this is why in the modern era um, so post kind of two, the year 2000 really um, scientists like myself that study uh, subcellular networks, subcellular molecular networks uh, use computers. Um, so we use computers to kind of model these often hundreds or thousands of interactions between a very very large number of proteins um, and we're not going to go into um, that level of detail here and it's not it's not important that that you understand all the different types of signaling pathways that you find in inside cells but that you need to appreciate uh, that these are not simple systems you know while i'm i'm drawing out you know a activates b activates c activates d whatever i'm massively oversimplifying and often it's much much more complex um, and that makes the job of a, a scientist, you know, a molecular scientist or a neuroscientist or, or whatever, trying to work out, you know, what happens when this, you know, what happens when serotonin binds to the 5-HT2A receptor, for example. Um, well, it's rather complicated. Um, and, uh, and for that reason, we are going to simplify a lot when we actually get to the 5-HT2A receptor. We'll be correct. Um, but we will we will often clip out uh, a lot of um, details that would simply cloud the issue. Um, anyway, um, let's now go back and look at an actual example of a signaling network, and hopefully this time things will make uh, a bit more uh, sense to you. So, so here you can see a uh, signaling network from some academic paper uh, and it looks again it looks as messy as the, the the other one we looked at but now hopefully you actually can start to see that this actually makes some kind of sense so um, so we can see the receptor here the, the main receptor that we're interested in uh, up the the top here um, and there's some kind of interaction with with a ligand um, and you can see that they have these proteins that are binding to the intracellular domain um, and then they are, you can see these arrows going to other proteins. So what's happening is you're getting um, the activation and inactivation of um, particular proteins, um, which then activate other proteins. So you can see, like take for example um, here, this protein here, RAP, um, it has like what, 
two, four, five arrows going from it. So this wrap protein uh, is, is interacting with, maybe activating, maybe inactivating or inhibiting, um, you know, five other proteins. And then each of those uh, interact with other proteins. And so you get these very complex, you know, this very, very complex emergent system um, arises with very, very complex behavior. Uh, but hopefully now that, that makes more sense to you, that it's simply a system of interactions between proteins. And in fact, you can see uh, they actually use, here you can see one of these flat-headed arrows, uh, which shows that PKC, now the K here stands for kinase, sometimes you get a clue uh, to what a protein does, sometimes you don't, but often when you see a K, um, as in here, IKK, GSK, um, ERK, these are often kinases and gives you an idea. So PKC here is phosphorylating. Let me clear that, I can't. There we go. So here PKC uh, it seems to be phosphorylating this, um, this protein called RAS. I think it says RAS, uh, GAP, uh, and inactivating it. Uh, whereas um, here, it's just here, it's phosphorylating, activating this other protein called CARMA1, Karma1, again, who knows where that name came from, I don't recognize it. Um, um, but you can see clearly that uh, it's a very complex system with proteins interacting with often more than one other protein, and sometimes they will activate certain proteins and inactivate others. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. Um, this is a, another example, so this is actually from one of my papers. You can find this online if you want to read it. Um, so this is a uh, the inside of a particular type of, of neuron, and you can even see here we actually have um, amper receptors. So these are the amper receptors um, that you're now very very familiar with um, in the postsynaptic membrane, and you can see a, a whole network of of protein interactions. Um, so we have a glutamate receptor here, a different type of glutamate receptor, not a, uh, an AMPA receptor um, that interacts with uh, this protein called AC, uh, which indirectly inter in, uh, activates something called PKA, which then interacts with this system. Here you can see a funny old protein here called CAMK2, which is a very, very interesting protein that is kinase that actually activates itself. Uh, which is why you've got these kind of arrows going around. It's very interesting. Um, you have these, uh, I show the it's inhibitory interactions. I show them with dotted arrows rather than flat-headed arrows, but you get the picture. Uh, you can often see these loops. So you have a loop here. So PKC activates this protein called RAF, which activates this protein called MEC, which activates protein called ERK, which activates PALA2, which is an enzyme that actually produces a small molecule called arachidonic acid, AA, which actually activates PKC. So you get a full, it's called a positive feedback loop, which is very, very important for um, the function uh, of uh, the cell. It's very important in learning, for example. <sighs> anyway, um, so, so hopefully now you, you have a it's not important, of course, that you remember any of the names of any of these proteins inside the cell. Um, when we get to the 5-HT2A receptor, you might want to study that a little bit more carefully. Uh, if it, you know, because you know, you're interested in learning about psychedelic neuroscience, it's, it's useful to have a few of these names down the pub. And you can start telling people about these signaling proteins that are, you know, that the, um, the 5-HT2A receptor signaling pathway, you can say, yeah, the 5-HT2A pathway, that's a very interesting one. You, you can do, start like that. People will all be very, very impressed, um, and they will buy you drinks and things like that. So, yes, or you can impress the girls or the boys uh, with your knowledge of 5-HT2A receptors. But before we get there, it really was important that you, you have a conceptual understanding of what a receptor is. Um, so a receptor is this, to repeat myself, but again, I think it's, it's worthwhile summarizing um, a receptor is a protein that binds to a ligand, um, which activates, uh, binds to a ligand on the outside of the cell that activates um, one, sometimes more, signaling pathways 
um, inside the cell. And you know now what I mean by a signaling pathway. It's where proteins influence each other, interact with each other by phosphorylating or dephosphorylating or binding to each other uh, and, and affect each other's activity, uh, maybe activating um, uh, activating each other or, or inactivating each other, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, so I think that's some pretty heavy lifting for this video. So in the, um, in the next video, I'm going to um, maybe I will introduce the, uh, the, the receptor everyone, on everyone's lips, uh, the 5-HT2A receptor. And that will basically bring us then towards, well, really to the end of the unit. Um, and we can look forward to actually thinking about psychedelics specifically as ligands uh, that activate certain types of uh, receptor. So I will see you in the next video.